tight. So allow me to. Okay. Giovanni here, the first one from the Italian Void Mafia. <laughs> and the first one to fall back to a Mac when presenting, because Linux always works, right? Always. Right, go for it. So, uh, I'll try to be very, very fast uh, and uh, to leave some space for some uh, question and answer because uh, uh, we'll, uh, we'll cover a lot of ground here because uh, uh, real-time communication is uh, getting uh, complex and complex. We, don't, we have uh, multiple protocol, multiple transport, uh, and so if you want to build something that is uh, really scalable in this uh, real world where you have uh, so many paths and uh, so many different clients, uh, you really need to put uh, some uh, thought on it, uh, some real engineering uh, and uh, to create also some uh, real world experience to check out what it works and what no. Uh, high availability as the first things. The, the most important part uh, in high availability is uh, uh, you really need uh, to have it all uh, double, at least double. So uh, before to thinking at uh, complex things, at software or things like that, uh, you first uh, uh, have to uh, have uh, double power supply, double uh, uh, different uh, circuit for your power, and uh, uh, double switches. For example, I mean, uh, you can put so much thought into uh, having uh, your double networks and things like that, and then your switch burns and you uh, <laughs> doesn't work in anything. So. Uh, as a first thing, uh, you uh, double it all. Then uh, you come out with uh, uh, the simplest high availability uh, architecture, that is uh, an active passive. Uh, so you will end up with uh, uh, one machine that is uh, uh, staying idle on the side of an active machine. And uh, that works very, very well and is uh, maybe the most imp most important architecture for uh, critical systems. So uh, you actually have a spare machine that is just on the side doing nothing, but uh, it doesn't scale. It doesn't scale at all. So you can use this architecture just to protect uh, something that is uh, a critical service, but uh, is absolutely nothing that uh, you can scale and uh, that you can absorb millions and millions of uh, user packets or whatever you want. So you need uh, something that is high available and scalable. And uh, so in uh, this architecture, this doesn't scale at all because uh, you have one that is completely idle and uh, you have only one to absorb all your uh, clients. Then uh, you start thinking at uh, load balancing. So you uh, end up having many machines uh, and something in the front that just distribute the calls, uh, distribute the packets uh, on all those machines. And uh, obviously you try to, be, uh, to combine the two architecture so you have high availability here on the front end so you have two uh, distributor two point of entrance uh, where one is active and one is passive. So those two are uh, machines that are able to sustain the entirety of your traffic but that's uh, don't need to be enormous machine because they just uh, uh, switches around and uh, route uh, packets. And uh, then you have on the back uh, your farm with uh, uh, all the machines that you need to offer service uh, to an uh, unlimited number of users. I mean, as the users uh, uh, grow, so you just uh, keep adding machines. And then you have uh, uh, the back end, uh, your database, uh, uh, fundamentally, that is also in high availability. So is in also in that case, it uh, is uh, duplicated or it can be a cluster. So both with MySQL and uh, with Postgres, you can have a cluster architectures that uh, scales very well. In uh, um, 
you have a difference between how you can uh, scale with different protocols because for example the uh, the protocols that is uh, uh, in this uh, moment the most uh, uh, scalable is definitely SIP because uh, SIP has uh, let's say at least 20 years of uh, experience in being uh, hyper scalable and uh, uh, fundamentally running the whole telecommunication world in all the world and uh, and so you really can uh, can can do uh, scaling with SIP and we will see that it's kind of different uh, when you approach that through WebRTC and uh, and uh, Virto that is a protocol that is uh, specific of uh, uh, free switch in this moment and uh, Another uh, need that uh, you need to take care about uh, is uh, uh, NAT because, uh, uh, as you know, all of our class uh, client uh, will be uh, behind NAT at that, uh, uh, on that home, on that office, behind uh, routers that apply a NAT. And uh, uh, we had before uh, all the presentation that uh, was all about uh, not having no more NATs. But, uh, I mean, for some year, uh, we still have to, do, to deal with NAT. And also, in this case, uh, we will use uh, uh, the front end to uh, manage the NAT, particularly uh, we will use uh, uh, C proxies that, uh, uh, that are, uh, or uh, Daniel Camaglio, or uh, leave you open CPS, or there are also other, uh, <coughs> other software that can do uh, C proxies. And uh, then we have uh, the uh, how to put, uh, where to put uh, the SIP register. The uh, registration is a high frequency transaction that uh, uh, is uh, doing a lot of packets moving back and forth. And when you have millions of, uh, uh, of customers, of uh, clients, uh, you then have uh, to really think where you put uh, the register. You can put it on the back end or you can put it on the front end. Definitely it's better to put it on the front end. Uh, because as uh, uh, this morning uh, Matt was uh, uh, making clear in the uh, scaling asterisk presentation, uh, the SIP proxy is uh, um, designed to uh, deal with uh, so many uh, transactions. <coughs> then uh, the same uh, uh, proxy will do uh, dispatcher and load balancer and uh, we arrive at this kind of uh, uh, initial architecture where uh, we have the media that is flowing through a media proxy and uh, this uh, media proxy that is managed by uh, the C proxy will uh, take care about uh, uh, the NAT part of the media because is the media the problem. Normally you always are able to uh, establish a session between your server and uh, your end user, but uh, maybe this, this session will have uh, uh, no audio or audio in only, one, uh, in, in only one direction. Those are the typical NAT problems that uh, uh, with this kind of architecture, having the uh, proxy managing through a media proxy, the media path uh, will, we will solve. And uh, uh, this is uh, uh, the typical uh, algorithm with, uh, uh, that you use to uh, distribute uh, uh, registrations and uh, uh, call to a uh, uh, backend made by more, uh, multiple machines. Then we will see that uh, with Virto protocol, that is an alternative uh, more geared uh, through a web developer to JavaScript developer, etc., uh, to uh, integrate uh, real time communication into web services. Uh, uh, with Virto, we don't have this uh, uh, problem uh, uh, about uh, NAT. Uh, and uh, uh, media path because uh, uh, Virto and uh, uh, use uh, 
directly IC uh, for uh, distributing media. And uh, uh, it's much more simple to use uh, when uh, you are dealing uh, with, uh, um, when you are dealing with uh, uh, web pages and uh, web developer. So uh, the, the problem in this case is that uh, Virtual being a younger protocol has not yet uh, all the infrastructure like registers and proxies uh, to keep the, uh, him growing. So we, uh, we use uh, IP tables to distribute on the back end and to choose uh, on the basis of an algorithm uh, where to uh, route uh, the single call. And uh, um, in this case, we arrive at having uh, the same kind of architecture that is uh, bought for, uh, um, bought for uh, SIP and uh, for Virtu. <laughs> One important role is made by uh, the Keep Alive the, uh, software, that is uh, the software that manages uh, uh, the high availability between two machines. So from one side uh, you distribute uh, using the proxy or IP tables and from the other side you use uh, VRRP uh, with Keep Alive the, to have uh, one only machine active uh, on each moment uh, and so uh, you have the active passive architecture. And uh, then you have on the back uh, uh, all the farm and this farm need to access uh, 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 some uh, uh, shared file system and uh, in this case uh, what is the most uh, uh, easy to use is GlusterFS uh, when uh, you can have just uh, a small cluster of uh, uh, machine that uh, exports a brick and uh, uh, the important thing is uh, Keep your mind, don't use uh, uh, shared uh, file systems for something that is very fast moving or for very small transactions. That is a no-go. But uh, for all media files, uh, configuration files, etc., etc., uh, shared file systems are okay. Same things uh, is important uh, to have uh, some uh, uh, form of uh, indirection uh, when you access uh, uh, your database. So uh, each machine need to have uh, its own uh, proxy for the database uh, so you don't clog your database with uh, uh, hundreds of connections. And, uh, um, and uh, uh, this is about uh, uh, load balancing into scaling, but we have a lot of uh, uh, special cases, uh, as also Matt uh, was talking this morning, uh, that you need not to, dist to blindly distribute uh, uh, your incoming call, but uh, you need a call to land on a specific machine because it needs to, com to be joined uh, to, uh, at the audio level with some other call. And in this case, uh, uh, the answer is uh, uh, you need to partition. Partition and uh, means uh, you distribute uh, uh, the calls uh, not in base uh, of uh, uh, the load uh, but uh, in base of uh, uh, some more intelligence uh, in, the, in practice of uh, what uh, uh, domain uh, that call belongs to. So uh, you can, uh, uh, this is in a um, in a distributed uh, architecture when uh, you need to use uh, specific uh, uh, services, for example, a conference services uh, for a one big domain. So you just uh, uh, destinate uh, uh, one specific machine or more than one machine to uh, this service. But uh, you have uh, another uh, situation that is also very, uh, very common and that has its own specific need, that is multi-tenancy. So you may have just the opposite, not one big domain with millions of users, but uh, many thousands of domains, each one with maybe 100 users. So. Uh, what you do in this case is that uh, you distribute and hash uh, on, uh, on the domain. So 
uh, each call that uh, pertains to a domain goes uh, to a specific machine. And in that case, uh, you have another uh, set of uh, keep lives where you have, uh, let's say, once per machine for each uh, four machine, and that machine is uh, uh, ready to take the uh, to take the place of the machine that failed. And uh, <laughs> this is the last slide, so I'm uh, <laughs> I was able to stay in the time. Okay, so uh, those are books. Just please questions. Come on, you're on time. You're tired in time. You got three minutes, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're done. <laughs> Tell us about the book, then. There's more than one book. Which book do you want? Oh, damn, the good one. Yeah, a couple of. And probably there will be another one for August. And so if there is no questions, uh, I invite you all to come in Chicago for Clucon and uh, that uh, it will be like the spiritual continuation of this conference. So, question. We have two minutes for question. You can ask everything. What is the best pizza in the modern tray? Uh, one that does this one spare for multiple things. That is now uh, ready and working. Now, sir. Maybe I not understood the question. Um, this module that does the um, one spare server that's um, fully functional. Yeah, that that will be uh, a fully functional server. That uh, uh, I mean, uh, you keep uh, virtual IP addresses uh, on on those uh, on those machines. So if one uh, of those machines uh, goes down, this one will take uh, its uh, its address and uh, just will work as it was uh, that machine. Okay. Uh, and that's it. You just uh, uh, restart the services and give it the new IP address. So we keep paying Yeah, it's keep alive. Yep. Yeah. And uh, obviously, if you have uh, 100 uh, uh, production machines, uh, you may be uh, better to keep like five uh, spare or things like that. In case, in case we need the spare, do we keep the current calls up or those calls will go? That's, that's definitely depend. Uh, <coughs> Almost all WebRTC calls uh, will be able uh, uh, to just uh, continue. Yep. Uh, for the voice call, or, or let's say for the SIP call, uh, it depends. Uh, uh, FreeSwitch has a mechanism uh, uh, to migrate that. Uh, I will not put uh, so much uh, into that. Uh, first, because, uh, I mean, uh, uh, you're supposed that, uh, not to have a machine that continues failing. Second, it, uh, I mean, we are uh, always used that, that a call uh, can go down uh, and uh, you just uh, call back. And it's not, uh, I mean, someone that, that is uh, on surgery or something, I mean, it's not live at risk. So uh, it's doable. Uh, we demonstrated it. Uh, it I, I'm not sure that it works, uh, that it uh, is worth uh, for, uh, uh, for the investment and the attention that uh, it keeps. Definitely I will do that for a 9-11 or some emergency call or for, poly I mean, where it works, but not for a normal service. Why exactly do you need RTP proxy uh, on these we couldn't resolve everything on FreeSwitch without RTP proxy, right? Uh, RTP proxy is uh, is good to have uh, because uh, in this way you don't expose uh, uh, your farm uh, on the uh, on the public internet uh, and you have all uh, behind and so this is uh, from from one thing uh, is security from another thing uh, uh, many times uh, you are required by law uh, to have a single point where you 
can do uh, I mean access to it etc also it's uh, th there is a lot of reasons uh, of, of uh, both operative uh, of business and the law uh, for law that uh, you better keep that, that like that okay thank you then. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.